Hello and welcome to this video for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here at PCIM 2025 in Nuremberg and we're at the Texas Instrument Stand where we've seen some really fantastic stuff. Now, this show is all about the best and the latest in the whole power industry. And I'm joined by a very good friend from Texas Instruments, Andrew Plummer. Thank you ever so much for having us here today. Happy to be here. Now, just before we dive into all the new tech you guys are showing today, just tell the audience who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, I'm a uh, product marketing engineer for our high voltage uh, power business. I support uh, everything from flyback controllers to LLC, face shift at full bridge, analog, digital, and beyond. Fantastic. Now, I saw something on this screen about two minutes ago, and it kind of caught my attention. It said 48 volts uh, automotive USB-C. Was that correct? Yes. Fantastic. Show me what's going on. Yeah, so we're seeing a... Uh, an evolution within automotive electronics, right? And it's not just in the high power, you know, very powertrain related stuff. We're seeing it even in the lower voltage uh, side of things. So not only are we seeing our automotive customers evaluate, you know, new battery voltage in terms of, you know, 12 versus 48 volts. Um, we're also seeing how those changes are impacting systems throughout the vehicle, whether that's, you know, your motor drivers for, you know, uh, operating your lift gate or, you know, in this case, uh, operating the ports in your car, right? Yeah. Being able to charge our devices fast and keep them cool is something that we're all looking forward to uh, these days, and that's exactly what this is uh, showing. So we've got a uh, buck converter here that's uh, converting from 48 volts, and what you'll find uh, from this power tracker here is that when I uh, plug in, we're going to see it start to measure the uh, power being delivered uh, from this 48 volt rail uh, being converted out from the wall. And you can see around you know, one amp of current. So around 20 watts is being provided to this power or to this laptop and uh, providing some uh, charging. What makes this also really exciting, right, is that uh, in this particular case, it's not just one, right? If you're in the car with, you know, your kids, your significant other, you want to be able to charge multiple devices at once and you want to be able to do it quickly. And that's what this demo is uh, all about. And that's what TI's, uh, you know, converters, controllers and more are uh, optimized for. So. A trend which I tend to see in the automotive industry is that it, it takes a while for it to sort of adapt to new technology. So, for example, by the time that you've got USB-C, cars have only just gotten rid of their tape cassette. But it always seems to be like it, it takes a long time for things to sort of get into that area. Why is that the case? I think there's a lot of uh, factors about it. Um, I think... Uh, what's important for a lot of our, you know, automotive customers is ensuring the safety and reliability, yeah. Yeah. right? And not only in terms of our devices, but also in terms of, you know, the passengers within that vehicle. I think yeah. that there has to be a lot of, uh, through it, that there's a lot of standards that go into, uh, you know, whether that's ISO 26262 uh, and things of that nature. So I love how you knew uh, that off by heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot that goes into it, and you know, I think it all comes down to the safety and reliability. And so, and so, you need to have that you know, lots and lots of years of, of proven, proven reliability before you can go, start putting the latest tech into a vehicle. So, in the case of USB-C, it's taken a good few years to make sure that engineers know how it works. They've proven that it works over a period of time. The connectors are ready, the power systems are ready, and so now we can start to actually integrate those higher wattages into vehicles. Um, but in terms of just like, in terms of like USB-C power in general. Oh, do you think we're going to see more than 65 watts from these from these uh, from these solutions? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I'd say in terms of you know ports uh, that we had seen in the past, maybe it was you know only uh, able to output five volts. Yeah. Maybe in some of the cars from you know say five years ago it was yeah. nine volts. Now from the USB Type C protocol, we're seeing you know upwards of you know 12 volts and even up to 20 volts, uh, like in this case. So yeah. I think uh, you know there's going to be more power and more power per port. Yeah. And just to be clear about this uh, specific example we've got here, what you're demonstrating is that you can now do 65 watt USB-C in an automotive environment, even if it's electric. That's right. And, and one, sort of, one sort of thing that comes to my mind, I can sort of see being a problem as an engineer, is that when you move away from combustion engines where you typically have like a 12 volt system and, 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 and you'd be drawing power from the engine to sort of power these sort of higher end devices, do you see there being a, a greater need for efficiency now that we're moving to EV systems? Absolutely. I think the efficiency is important, not only because, you know, you don't want to drain your battery in those situations yeah. where, you know, the car is just sitting idling, uh, standing by. But right, we also, like you uh, mentioned, seeing more electric systems in the vehicle. And so there's a greater need in terms of power requirements throughout the vehicle. That's regardless of whether it's 12 volt, 48 volt, yeah. USB-C or not. So I think uh, absolutely the efficiency and the power density is all uh, a part of it. And that's what uh, TS products are there to support. I, and I understand that USB-C tends to be for more consumer devices, laptops, phones, that kind of thing. 
Um, but do you think that something like this might be adapted for maybe like inter-device communication inside a vehicle? Because because um, usually the, 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 the protocol that tends to be championed is things like uh, power over Ethernet or two-wire CAN buses and that kind of thing. But do you think USB-C could potentially play uh, that kind of role? In terms of, you know, how USB-C plays out and how it, you know, is used over vehicles, you know, in the long term, I'd say I'm not necessarily the USB product uh, expert, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I'll defer on that one. Uh, yeah. But definitely I'm excited to see how it goes. And uh, I know that, you know, when it comes to our buck converters, whether it comes to our synchronous rectification controllers uh, and more, um, you know, and also integrating GAN, I think it's something that TI is very excited about and we'll continue supporting our uh, customers' requests when it comes to things like that. And in the past year, uh, since since last time you guys were at PCIM, what kind of challenges have you seen engineers face when integrating USB-C type solutions in a vehicle? Yeah. So in terms of challenges, you know that customers are facing, uh, you know, in you know implementing USB Type C in the vehicle, there's you know, kind of it's this distribution, you know, piece of things. Where are you getting that 48 volt rail coming from? Right. Is it going to be the low voltage battery itself? Is that derived from the high voltage battery? I'd say that's one right. thing to so, address. Okay, so I think I've, I've gone a bit confused here. So this isn't necessarily 48 volts output on the USB-C side where you have like power, de uh, power delivery. This is 48 volts coming in to your USB-C uh, sort of power circuitry then being conditioned to whatever the attached device needs. That's correct. And so this is why you say, where does that 48 volts come from? Yes, exactly, exactly. And then kind of on the uh, sourcing uh, side of things or kind of the protocol, right? There's, uh, you know, the actual devices that, you know, do the hardcore, you know, 48 volt conversion itself, right? Are you talking about buck? You know, what topologies are you looking at? Uh, you know, are they soft switching? Are they hard switching? How do they do in terms of, uh, you know, EMC and EMI? Those are all things that our customers are uh, interested in. And those are challenges that, you know, we're trying to address with our products, not only in terms of, you know, uh, soft switching to kind of, you know, reduce some of those challenges, um, but, you know, investigate more novel types of uh, architectures and topologies and products. And in terms of sort of like USB-C connectivity, this is not just power, this is also data capabilities as well. Yeah. And so, and so that way you could have like uh, multiple ports on the front and they could all connect to the car's electronic system so you can get at maps, maybe something like Waze or whatever you're using to get from, you know, to, so you can use the car systems more efficiently. Yeah, very similar to what you're seeing today in terms of USB-A or another uh, standard. Fantastic. So just to wrap this video up, one more question for you. For the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with USB-C solutions that Texas Instruments is providing, what would you recommend that they do? We have a number of uh, solutions available uh, on our website. So we have reference designs, evaluation models for not only these devices, for others to get you started. And if uh, the kind of more digital programmable kind of side of things uh, is something uh, there for you too, we also have you know libraries available for some of the more uh, digitally configurable kind of code intensive uh, devices as well. So check out our website, check out our reference designs and uh, yeah, read some data sheets. Fantastic, thank you ever so much for having us here today. Always a pleasure. Thank you.